Welcome to Pennsylvania Newsmakers, and thanks for joining us. Well, speed enforcement and reckless driving, but also let's look at the condition of Pennsylvania's roads. But first, how about election? What you need to know about voting this year? Back after these words. Welcome to the fast-paced and unrehearsed weekly discussion featuring the leaders who help shape your world. Join us as we address the issues that impact you each and every day. This is Pennsylvania Newsmakers, and now, here's your host, Terry Madonna. Well, I'll tell you, we have a number of important topics to take up, and joining me to do that is Mark Levy. He's a reporter with the Associated Press and Angela Columbus with Spotlight Pennsylvania. They're frequent journalists who are guests on the program. All right, Angela, I'm going to start with you. Uh, voting is now taking place, mail-in balloting. That's no excuse. We also have traditional absentee uh, voting, and a huge hundreds of thousands of people will do that. And there's other complexities that, the, that we all need to know about voting this year. I'll start with you. Right. So um, people have until a week before the election to apply for a mail-in ballot. And as we found out in the 2020 election, which was the first time it was used, um, it was extraordinarily popular. Uh, the expectation is that many, many uh, thousands more than that, people will actually right. apply for one this year. Uh, but the question and, and the problem that we found in 2020 and we're hoping is not going to reoccur in th this year is that when people uh, prepare their ballots, there are many steps that you have to take, um, and you have to take them precisely. Otherwise, there's a big legal fight. You've got the two envelopes, the have, inner and Go that's ahead. That's right. You have a secrecy envelope, which is the inner envelope, and then the outer one, which you have to date and sign. And what uh, the question is going to be going forward is, if a voter does not do any of those steps appropriately, will counties, and how will counties yeah. seek to correct that? It's called ballot curing. Curing, right. Um, and, and by the way, Mark, mm. the fact of the matter is that some counties are going to do that. So if you forget to date it or sign it, or let's say the ballot isn't inside, that's a little difficult because you, these mail in ballots do not get processed before Election Day, correct? Right, right, that's right. So the fact of the matter is that some are going to let you make corrections to the outer envelope, I would assume, like dates and signatures, correct? That's right, and that's been the source of legal battles as well. Uh, Republicans have tried essentially to make sure that uh, ballots with minor technical deficiencies on the envelopes get thrown out. Um, and there are counties that have helped voters fix those technical deficiencies, whether it's, hey, you got to come in and sign right. it, hey, you forgot the envelope, hey, you forgot uh, to date it. Um, those lawsuits, though, were essentially laughed out of court in federal courts in 2020, um, where a, a judge basically told uh, Republicans who were suing that you should be suing the counties that didn't help right. people fix their ballots. But not all counties will do that ballot curing. Is that, it's now up to each county, is that correct? It's, it's up to the counties because the law is silent on it. And, right. and the Republican claim is that, well, if it's not uh, specifically authorized in the law, then it's not allowed. But courts have, have not um, taken that, that bait. In fact, we saw a Commonwealth Court decision in this state uh, just recently that said that right. counties should lean in towards helping people's ballots count. Now, that, that case filed right. by the national and state Republican parties is pending out the state Supreme Court trying to outlaw counties from helping people fix those technical deficiencies on their ballots. Okay, we also have drop boxes and certain right. problems with them. Explain that. Well, uh, again, it's another uh, area in the law that is silent. Um, drop boxes are not specifically authorized uh, in, the, in the law, and so there were legal battles uh, and unsuccessful ones in 2020 to try and outlaw them. Uh, but not every county has them, and uh, there are very specific rules around uh, drop boxes. You can only drop your, your ballot. Own. You're not supposed to be ballot stuffing. And uh, Also, isn't it called ballot harvesting? Or ballot har you, right. You harvest take 20 envelopes and you drop them. Go right. ahead. <laughs> right. That, you're not supposed to be doing that. And, uh, you know, Republicans have raised questions about ballot, uh, these, these boxes. Are they secure? Are they open uh, to potential fraud? Uh, but they are going to be present, not in every county. Some counties have yeah. decided not to uh, have yeah. them. What really surprises me, Mark, is that uh, there are areas here that need to be reformed, and the legislature can't get its act together, so to speak, to do that. 
And it doesn't seem to me to have, I mean, obviously more Democrats use uh, mail-in balloting than Republicans. So in that sense, it's divided Democrats and Republicans. Right. And it's not so much that the legislature can't get their act together, but this is basically a national fight over mail-in voting yeah, that, that, that Donald Trump started in early 2020 when he began demonizing it as, as rife with fraud, baselessly, really, because we don't know of any widespread fraud, fraud that is right. uh, sowed by mail-in voting or by drop boxes. Um, but the, the stalemate in the legislature reflects that, uh, so much so that uh, there is no agreement among lawmakers and Governor Tom Wolf over just even how to fix the most minor, minor gray thing, areas. They ought to be able to fix, in my humble judgment. We, they've had three years to do yeah, it, and they point. haven't, uh, despite the counties going to them repeatedly and begging right. them. All right, coming up, we're going to do an update on the governor's election. I'm sure you're following that because we are as well. This broadcast of Pennsylvania Newsmakers is presented by the Pennsylvania Chamber of Business and Industry, the statewide voice of business, and by the Pennsylvania State Education Association, bringing the power of a great education to our schools, our students, and our communities. This broadcast of Pennsylvania Newsmakers is brought to you by the Pennsylvania Highway Information Association, the go-to source to learn about transportation projects and issues. Please visit pahighwayinfo.org. And by the Pennsylvania Manufacturers Association. Business in Pennsylvania is our business. We want to talk about the governor's election, State Senator Doug Mastriano, the 33rd district, which is basically in Franklin County, and the current attorney general of the state of Pennsylvania, Josh Shapiro, are battling it out. Uh, that's probably an understatement to say battling it out, right? Well, Angela? at the moment, uh, Shapiro is leading in the polls uh, pretty uh, substantively as well. And um, there is absolutely no question that he is leading uh, by far in campaign fundraising. He, uh, we just got the latest campaign finance reports. He reported spending a, uh, just a, a record $28 million to Mastriano's less than $1 million, just for comparative right. purposes. And that has allowed uh, Shapiro to be on the airwaves, to inundate people with, uh, you know, male campaign um, literature. And um, Mastriano, on the other hand, is still kind of sticking to a non-traditional campaigning style where he's not really uh, engaging with mainstream media. He won't talk to you folks. Right. And he's <laughs> just cutting his first commercial now, um, yeah. which, and, you know, we're six weeks before the election. Right. And we've invited him on the program. He has a standing invitation to come on our program. Josh Shapiro was on the program, and Mastriano, in fact, the campaign didn't even respond. Well, and, and Mastriano is the first Republican candidate in my memory for, for uh, nominee, Republican nominee for governor who uh, declined to go to the Pennsylvania Chamber of Business and Industries dinner, uh, mm -hmm. you know, six weeks before the election. He didn't go, so Shapiro went, uh, and Dr. Oz, the Republican nominee for Senate, went, and they basically got a half hour of sort of answering questions in front of, uh, you know, an audience of hundreds. Yeah. He has tried, I, I think, and I mean, he is best known for his belief about widespread corruption. We're back, obviously, to the Trump presidential election in our state. He was behind this effort to get alternative electors to mm -hmm. the elected electors mm -hmm. that were Biden electors in the, state of in the state of Pennsylvania. But it seems lately he's talking more about the economy and deregulation and crime, which is an issue that Republicans are using all over the right. country. There is no question that this year's governor's race is a referendum on pretty uh, much every single major issue in American politics, whether right. that be access to abortion, whether that be access to the ballot, uh, and in this state, um, you know, public education funding. Uh, so on, on that front, <clears throat> there definitely has been an effort by um, Mastriano to maybe kind of shift away from uh, those really hot button issues. But the problem is we're not really hearing about um, yeah. from him. And yeah. so 
The question is, is that message even reaching voters? Yeah. I mean, I would just add that you know, Mastriano has downplayed some of his, um, some of the hot button issues such as abortion. Um, he uh, has said during the primary, which helped him win the primary, that he was in favor of banning all, all abortion um, without exceptions, um, which is not, you know, not favored by the majority of people in Pennsylvania, according to, you know, public and opinion And didn't polls, he refer but, to them as murder? Uh, he may have. He I don't, may have. I, I don't okay. know. But, but he's also continued to peddle conspiracy theories, just completely baseless and unproven conspiracy theories um, that have nothing to do with the economy, have nothing to do with um, the Trump election. So um, there are roads that he is going down that he went down during the primary that helped him uh, be popular with the state's most far right voters. Yeah, partic yeah particularly the, the Trumpites, the Trump voters that are is part of his base. But He's having trouble in the suburbs, which, right. rep, you know, is a huge percentage of the vote in our state. Absolutely. And um, not only that, but there has been a coalition of Republicans who has come out and uh, endorsed Josh Shapiro. Uh, and that really hurts somebody like yeah. Mastriano, who has to do well in those areas. Right. Well, look, I want to thank you for coming in. All right, coming up, we're going to talk about transportation. We're going to talk about speed enforcement and reckless driving. All of that after these words. This broadcast of Pennsylvania Newsmakers is brought to you by Cross-State Credit Union Association. Credit unions, where people are worth more than money. To find a credit union that is right for you, go to ibelong.org. And by the Energy Association of Pennsylvania, Pennsylvania's energy information source. This broadcast of Pennsylvania Newsmakers is brought to you by the Association of Pennsylvania State College and University Faculties, representing the faculty and coaches who are devoted to providing quality public higher education for Pennsylvania's college students. All right, speed enforcement. Bob Latham, the executive vice president with the Associated Pennsylvania Constructors, and joins me. All right, as we tape this show, uh, Outside of Harrisburg, I came up 283. Literally, Bob, I was cut off three times, cut off, and I had to literally put my brakes on. And every day I, on WGAL News 8, guess what? Uh, road closed, accident here, accident there. What is going on? It's one of the biggest concerns that we have in our industry, and again, representing the construction industry, the men and women who work uh, on our roads and bridges, um, when you're to think about it, trying to work, trying to do construction work while there's uh, trucks and cars going by at 80, 90 miles an hour, we've had a concerted effort to try to slow them down. Uh, one of the things we did was we borrowed from Maryland and a couple of other states and instituted uh, automated work zone speed enforcement. So if you speed through a work zone where there where there is a device there, you will get a ticket in the mail. Yeah. Um, and that is working where it's deployed, but it's deployed limited in a limited yeah. fashion. Uh, it seems like uh, since the pandemic, um, we've seen an influx uh, or a, a growth of people just driving recklessly. I don't know what yeah. it's all about, but one of the things we are seeing is that where the cameras are not deployed, people know they're not, and so yeah. they just speed through the work zones anyways. Yeah, but, you know, cutting people off, reckless driving, you can do it without speeding. Right. Uh, well, speed <laughs> seems to be the major portion, okay. but, but, yeah, you're but, probably but, right but there. Uh, nutsy driving is, uh, <laughs> isn't helping as well. So All right. we're, we are looking at reauthorizing that bill and, and actually expanding it so yeah. we can at least get people to slow down in highway work zones. The other topic that I want to get to is, is our high gas tax. Okay. Well, we keep hearing about this, you know, that we have the third highest gas tax in the country and, and why are we so high and we need to do something about it and that sort of thing. One of the things that's important to understand is that we have a, we have a intentional policy in that regard. So we have l low registration fees for automobiles. We have low license fees. So your uh, costs to enter the system or use the system are relatively low in Pennsylvania. Other states have high registration fees. You may pay hundreds of dollars a year in registration fees. Uh, and our theory is that you, if you drive a little, 
uh, it doesn't cost you much to get on the road. But if you drive a lot, right, you right. pay more in higher gasoline taxes, for example. And then there are other, like Virginia has a personal property tax that you pay annually on your car, could be several hundred dollars. Uh, Maryland, all of the vehicle sales tax goes into transportation. It goes into our general fund here, so we don't have access to yeah. that revenue as well. So our policymakers made the decision that we're going to you're going to pay more the more you drive in uh, in higher gasoline taxes. And that's an issue that we're going to have to face going forward because as cars get more fuel efficient, more and more electric cars get online, then you have a, uh, a revenue problem. There All right, let, let's turn to transportation. I still, and I'm sure many of our viewers do, you know, you see all kinds of construction work going on mm -hmm. and it's a funding issue. So what's the situation right now with... Uh, roads and bridges and the construction that's going on and then obviously tie in the where does where does the money come from so in pennsylvania we still have a lot of challenges with the condition of our roads and bridges we have made a big dent in the number of unsafe bridges if you will or structurally deficient i shouldn't say unsafe they are safe to drive over but they right. need work on them right uh structurally deficient or maybe they're past their life cycle and all that but we do regular inspections so they are safe uh, but we have a long way to go. Now, the federal government passed a major uh, infrastructure bill last fall, and uh, Pennsylvania stands to receive uh, about 20 percent increase or maybe $500 million a year more uh, in construction funds from that. But we still have to match that money, and we're a little short on, on mm -hmm. doing that. Uh, the other issue, of course, as everybody is very much aware of, is the cost of everything has gone up, and construction materials are no are, are no different. So while we while we have more money coming in in revenue, it's a higher cost. So we're sort of like treading water right now. All right, we're going to run to a break. When we come back. Uh, let's talk about electric vehicles and their mm -hmm. future. Bob Latham will weigh sure. in on that uh, after these words. This broadcast of Pennsylvania Newsmakers is brought to you by the Pennsylvania Medical Society. Inspired physicians committed to the good health of Pennsylvanians and the advancement of the practice of medicine. All right, I'm talking with Bob Latham, one of the state's leading experts on uh, transportation issues. Bob, before I go, we, we go on, you wanted to say something about... Sure, when we were talking about the speeding and speed enforcement, uh, one of the things I wanted to mention was, I, I looked this up, almost 650,000 uh, violations or citations were issued just in those limited instances where we actually have the cameras in, in the speed cameras in the work zone. Eighty-five percent of them were first uh, first offenses, which means they just got a warning. Yeah. So one of the things we're going to try to do is maybe beef that up a little bit. But think about that limited deployment on oh, highways and, and, and the turnpike, and it's still uh, three hundred thousand or more a year. That, that's a lot a, of speeding going on. Yeah, so we, folks, need, the folks need to put the brakes on. Yeah, and we need to do a lot more training with <laughs> yeah. the cutting you off and right. all the kind put of put the stuff. brakes on and don't cut Terry off. <laughs> yeah, there you go. All right. Electric vehicles, the future. It is. I mean, you know, uh, all the major manufacturers have said that they're going to be investing heavily in, in electric vehicles. I don't think it can happen right away. I mean, sure. you know, our grid can't, can't handle that. But eventually we're going to see more of that and more hybrid vehicles and more maybe natural gas. So as we look at gasoline and diesel fuel, it is a declining uh, source of energy. And since our tax is based on the consumption of it, it's a very easy to understand that those revenues are going to go down. So we have to find a way to but augment. those vehicles aren't cheap. And they're not cheap. And, I'm, and the, the second point is they're not paying anything right now <laughs> yeah. other than the regular registration fee that I just that we talked about earlier in, yeah. in the segment. So uh, we have to look at a way that those drivers can pay their fair share of, you, of highway user fees. And they're really right now there are two ways to approach this. As we... There's a lot of money being put in the federal infrastructure bill, and then you read about it every day. We're investing in charging stations. We're, we're, we're you know, we're, our tax dollars are building charging stations. There's, there's a incentive for people to do electric vehicles and all that. There needs to be a way to have them pay a user fee for the highways, for highways and highway use as well. So. Well, we're looking at that. I think that there's a, uh, a lot of support for that among the public. We've done some, some polling that shows that, that, you know, everybody thinks 
everybody should pay a reasonable fair share of the cost of infrastructure, yeah. whether you drive an electric vehicle or a diesel powered uh, truck. All right, uh, let's talk about uh, transportation funding. How optimistic are you that this funding is going to be sufficient to deal with the problems that we have here? Well, we've made great strides in the last several years on the amount of money, and we've talked about this a, a lot, about the amount of money that comes out of that high gas tax right. and goes into the general fund to pay for the operations of the state police. Uh, we're optimistic in that both candidates for governor, um, Senator Mastriano and Attorney General Shapiro, have indicated that they understand that that's an issue that has to be once and for all resolved. So in other words, we started at a high of about $800 million a year a couple of years ago. We're still at 500. That's still a lot of money. If we could find that way to, mm -hmm. to fund law enforcement, and I think both candidates have indicated they want to do that, find another way to fund law enforcement and free up those monies that people are paying for roads so that they can actually go for roads. If, that, if we can get that you know, finally over the hurdle. Right. That plus the short-term money that we have from the federal government will allow us to, to really to, to do well in, in fixing our roads and bridges in, in the short term. That'll buy enough time to try to find this, you know, what's the next way to pay for roads, sure. uh, whether it be a, uh, a so mileage broadening, fee or something. broadening this out uh, beyond the candidates for governor, it also seems to be bipartisan in the legislature, right? right? It's not one of those things that divides Democrats and Republicans. No, I think that, you know, the, uh, the COVID money that's been held back and we have a high rainy day fund and all that, I can't argue with the General Assembly's approach there to be a little bit cautious this year, but I think next year under under a new administration, maybe they can, you know, we'll, we'll see where they, this economy shakes out and where we are. There's to be an opportunity to yeah. augment the law enforcement using some of that money and then freeing up gas tax money for, for people to fix roads. Yeah, now broadening it, the public seems to support this as well. I think the public generally understands that you're traveling on the on the roads, you're going over bridges. I mean, the fact of the matter is, it needs to be safe. Uh, I think again, as people drive and they fill up their tank and they they understand that yes, we have a low registration fee, but I'm paying a high gas tax. Uh, uh, I think everything everybody says, you know, I, I kind of like, I, I think that I'm paying that high gas tax to fix roads. I'd like to see it do that, find another way to fund law enforcement, and uh, and they would support that. Yeah, yeah, that 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 seems reasonable to me, right. given, I mean, and it should not be partisan. There's no reason for it to be partisan at all. No, I don't think so. Uh, all right. Roads wanna, are bipartisan. Yeah, I want to <laughs> thank you for coming in. This My was pleasure. a very, very important update. All right, we'll see you next week for another edition of Pennsylvania Newsmakers, and as always, stay well.